Hi, Francesca. Thank you so much for taking the time out for our audience uh, this episode. I really appreciate it. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks. Yeah, I'm doing good. I'm great. Thank you. Very good. Sun is shining here. It's cold, but it's um, <laughs> nice, bright sky. So I'm happy. Yeah, that's good. And my end is like a cloudy. So it, is it? That's how it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday was uh, a, a sunny. Yesterday was really sunny. So it's just British weather, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Switching over from north down to south. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so today we have like an interesting topic to talk about, which is burnout for entrepreneurs. And obviously I can relate it to the, as entrepreneur myself. So it'd be like an interesting topic to talk about. So before we get to the topic, just for our audience and me would love to know more about you, how you become a coach and what inspired you to become one and what you used to do before becoming a coach. Yeah, well, I've my journey has been quite, quite organic actually I've always been into health and well-being and fitness um, and I started 20 years ago so I've, mm-hmm. I've always worked within that industry um, and 20 years ago I was working in gyms doing fitness instructing personal training and built up my business and I loved it I loved what I was doing I was really busy maybe teaching classes yeah. um, had a a, a large one-to-one client base um so through my 20s that was great we're running around all over town different areas of london working early mornings evenings um because that's kind of busy time for a personal yeah. trainer they like before people go to work and after after work and stuff and throughout the day so that was great in my 20s and then early 30s, I started to burn out. I, it was, it just mm. became pretty un, quite unsustainable. And yeah. um, I, and then, and then because I live in London and you know modern life and fast pace, I began to notice the same signs in my clients. So mm-hmm. I started to recognise that they were going through, you know, at like burnt out just just trying to juggle so much in their modern yeah. life um especially mo- like mothers as well juggling like the childcare, maybe having a career or young baby and um you know what, balancing everything yeah. else and so i um it took me i got really fascinated with just understanding more about how stress affects the body the hormonal system and really the mi- missing elements of in in fitness at the time was the mental emotional and spiritual well-being um and so i guess going through my own sort of crisis in uh, mid 30s early yeah. mid 30s of just not feeling fulfilled anymore and just felt like I was just going through the motions mm-hmm. um I wanted to understand more and, and I wasn't where I wanted to be in my my life at that time and so yeah. I was putting immense pressure on myself and that took me on a journey onto training in yoga and um transformational breath and really the journey for myself so everything that I learned I applied to myself and training in holistic lifestyle coaching with a check institute which was much more about the missing factors that was yeah. sleep and rest and how much how you know much should you train how to really build your energy um your thoughts and breathing and mm-hmm. eating right for you so all of these things the fundamentals really the foundation building that first and then when i started to apply it to myself and to my clients that was a, a huge game changer yeah so that was the beginning of my sort of changing the journey. way that I worked and the way that I work now. Yeah. 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 So how long, how long <laughs> so, have you been there coach now? Um, I say 2012, so about nine years, nine years. Yeah. Um, and um, I, yeah, so I, I studied with the Czech Institute doing holistic lifestyle coaching and did my level one, level two, and then just incorporated it into what I what I was doing, and and then trained in um, mm-hmm. various other body work and breath work, and now have kind of created my own system, incorporating all of that. So yeah, 
that the mo the fundamentals are strongly in place really building a strong foundation of physical mental emotional spiritual health and well-being because that is a foundation to all things if you want to run a successful business the yeah. energy of the person behind that is key to the success of your business as, as is in your relationships if you're not healthy in yourself how are you going to contribute to your being present and participating in a relationship so yeah it's the key to everything yes well true so like you made a transition for like a personal trainer to like a coach right yes exactly exactly so away from working in gyms and personal yeah. training to more holistic holistic lifestyle coaching and um really building that foundation mm -hmm. yeah so what was the actual thing like it was burning out uh is there like uh, the time you was giving to your clients like a uh, obviously personal trainer mostly work with a one-to-one -one, uh early mornings and things like that is it because of that or like a uh, it wasn't actually for you, like uh, you decided uh, personal training is not my thing. What was actually like um, the main cause of the burnout? Um, it was a couple of things. It was, I think I was, I love, I actually loved what I well, loved what I was doing um, right. until, yeah, until I started kind of burning mm -hmm. out. And, and, and it was, it's really just giving out so much of my energy. So yeah. my energy was always going out, always going out to others, to my clients. And, and I didn't have the balance of bringing it back in. Right. So in terms of the industry that I was working in, giving out so much of my energy, but then when I trained, I would train quite intense. So I was just a typical kind of do, 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 yang, 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 mm -hmm. as are many people in the city, many people in London and many people just living modern life especially in their 20s and 30s they'll kind of work yeah. hard and then they might socialize entertain clients and then they go to the gym and they hit it hard so um I think probably not rested enough I didn't have my principles of health mm -hmm. um solidly in place like I ate well and stuff but I, I wasn't rested enough I was, yeah. you know, it's also about not having boundaries. So if you say yes to everything and you'll be there at any time, you know, not any place, but be there at any time to serve your clients. But maybe it was compromising me having enough sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was at my client's house at 6 30 in the morning, yeah. that compromised me being able to have enough sleep. Or if I was working with clients till 9 p.m. and then out again at six there was an, an and eventually that has an effect an accumulative yeah. effect maybe not once but it has an accumulative effect so then you start to become resentful so you haven't got enough you haven't you're not giving enough time to your to yourself to replenish um right. so there was that and yeah i say they're the main, main things is just not having those boundaries in, in fully in place being clear giving enough restoration giving out much, too much so much of my energy and and perhaps um not charging appropriately for my services yeah so that i didn't have to spread myself so thin mm -hmm. yeah so those who like uh, burned out as entrepreneurs what do you actually think like what's the main cause of the being a burnout because we have like a different level of achievements some of have like a different level of title some of CEO founder of the company some of them doing majority of work because they are self-employed mm -hmm. so what was the main thing like for entrepreneurs for burnout yeah and I think when you run your own business you tend to do you know you obviously you do way more <laughs> than yeah. any work more than if you would just clock off at you know five mm -hmm. um i think a lot is there's many reasons there are um but what the solution is to have the foundation strongly in place i mean there's there's so many reasons like why are you working so hard sometimes yeah. it could, could be the question what is it that you're trying to achieve or, or prove sometimes um sometimes it's um you know it can be yeah 
a, a lot stemming from that like I had a belief that being busy mm -hmm. spreading myself thin meant that I was successful but I didn't really have my principles in place to to look at that so when I reevaluated that I was like well actually that's not my definition of success because I'm kind of breaking myself yeah being so busy and spreading myself thin let me redefine that I want to make my my def and when I got, got clear about what my definition definition of success was that really changed the way I worked and it changed my business to be um a game changer so that I was had time the time and energy and resources to do the things that I love to build a strong container for myself to right. take care of my health to build a strong container myself so that I can give in a very powerful way yeah but maybe not be spreading myself so thin so I say number one is getting really clear and redefining your success on your terms because if you're not if if a, especially as an entrepreneur or business owner if you're not clear on what success is on your terms then you have to ask yourself the question why are you why are you slaving away why yeah. are you burning yourself out working but so getting clear is looking at different areas of your life as well mm -hmm. Are you able to spend time to be present with yeah. those that are near and dear to you? So this is something I have conversations with um, with other business owners and entrepreneurs that I work with is, is they're frantic in their business and then they're not able to be present outside of it because they haven't got time or the energy. Yeah. So how, how can we sort of just really look at that? Because then you're likely, if you have times to connect to the, the things that you love or the people that you love and be present and you prioritize that, if that's yeah. one of your top priorities, then you're likely to be more present in your business mm -hmm. and be more, thus more productive and yeah. more efficient. Do you see? Yeah, also like uh, I think it's like how much you can take on. You have to understand like what your capacity is so business is something like you're doing for a long term, right? Most of the entrepreneurs doesn't want to get retired from a business. If you love what you actually do, like if you look at Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, they're still on their businesses running and things like that. So you have to find a balance, like what you love, enjoy doing it rather than being burned out and how much you can take on during the day. Some people can work 18 hours straight without getting tired. And I've seen people over and over and some people, only can work like three, four hours a day, like a day on a lifestyle business. So you have to figure out like what type of business you are actually signed up for, right? Yes. Yeah. And have to delegate. And I bet you though, those 18 hour a day people, cumulative effect, that's yeah. not, um, they might be able to do it for a few days, maybe a few weeks, maybe a few years, they'll burn out. It's yeah. not sustainable. But if you go uh, like uh, go India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and I saw like a lot of business owners, they work 18 hours and they wouldn't burn out because that way their brain works. And it's like for a different person, it's different. If you go in the US, I work with so many business owners and their life is not balanced. I wouldn't say that. Like their family life is not balanced. Yes. Their social life is not balanced. Yeah. But they themselves, they're happy because this is where they're born to yeah. do they enjoy every yes. single minute of it like a work and and actually i want to point out there i don't believe in a completely balanced life because yeah. um you know there are seasons <laughs> there's there's seasons you know it's it's not everything is going to be every area of your life is going to be balanced all at once so that's mm -hmm. where you get clear on like okay what are my priorities what priorities is is, is for example my health so yeah. I prior if if that's not doing well then nothing's going to do my you know my business is not going to do well nothing's going to yeah. do, do not as many things are going to do well so it's getting really clear on what your top three priorities are so mine's health living with passion and purpose so growing and mm -hmm. in, investing in my personal development and my growth because that feeds me it fuels my inspiration to do the work that I do and be yeah. show up in the world and then relationships and, and um, connections. So I invest my time and energy in those areas, but it, 
I, you know, I'm, I'm not, a, I'm not big on socializing. You know, I don't, yeah. I don't really meet up with my friends that much, you know, because otherwise uh, that's just who I am. But yeah, I don't believe in a completely balanced, especially if you are a business owner, entrepreneur, you have to put the work in. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Like, uh, so what are the other things you can see for like a main thing for like a burnout? Like most of the case, could be a uh, different different situation because the COVID hit last year and even though it's going through this year as well, most of the business got affected. So that stress, that anxiety mm. because of the uncertainty, because we don't know when the shops will be open, we don't know what type of businesses will be open. And it, it burns out, right? For entrepreneurs, like constantly your brain is working, like what next if I need to do uh, low enough cash flow or low enough. I have to pay my bills, I have to pay my rent, the shops is not even open. So those who's listening, like entrepreneurs, how they can recover from that kind of situation for burnout and take it easy. Obviously they have no choice because of such a situation hit them. Mm, yeah, and I think that's a really, really good point. And this is where um, having the tools in life to have that foundation is fundamental because truth is there is there is no certainty there mm. is always we're always going to live with some uncertainty and because anything can change yeah anything can change and the practice of being okay <laughs> and it's a training <laughs> it's a practice and i'm not there completely yet <laughs> is really where it comes to taking care of your inner world right because your inner world reflects your outer world and that means connection practices whatever that is for you spiritual practices and no, self-regulation is absolutely key especially in these times and that means um bringing your nervous system into balance and harmony so that yeah. whatever's going on out there is not going to affect you as much because your inner world creates your outer world always yeah. how you feel in here within here your state within mm -hmm. reflects the reality your reality the reality that you're experiencing and it's a bit like becoming that tree yeah. grounded rooted tree amongst the chaos that's going to weather the storm rather than going into the franticness and getting caught up in the chaos that tree is not going to weather it yeah it's going to get pulled around it's going to get swept away so that's where and and this is what i've really been teaching my clients mostly in the last two years um and even way before that is take how to sort of really take care of yourself your inner world so whether that be through meditation mm -hmm. a breathing practice connecting to your energy morning rituals fundamental setting yeah. your starting your day setting and connecting to your energy first is very different and getting yourself grounded is very different than going straight into reactive mode of oh gosh what's happening in the world today let me check my emails yeah. what have i got to get back to that and that's exhausting on the mind as yeah. well. That's a very different experience than if you start your day. You have 10 minutes just to connect to yourself, set your energy, self-regulate. You begin your day in a calm and grounded place. Mm. Then the way, you the way you move in the world and yeah. show up and how things begin to unfold is very different from that frantic place yeah. so fundamentally there are things that we can't control outside of us sometimes sure. but what you can control is how do i feel what's going on in here mm -hmm. and that's the most important thing yeah controlling your own emotion right and the action we take i think like uh, there is the best way if you put it this way so have your morning ritual right so what do you do in the first thing in the morning so if you're a yes. spiritual person start with your prayers do some exercise yes. then spend some time with your family talk to them like have the joy moment because you know some hectic days coming ahead right so uh just be ready for it it's like preparing going to the war so entrepreneurship is kind of work you don't know what the next problem is they're offering you and then if you start working nine o'clock or ten o'clock so you don't yes. know 
So I think it's preparing for the be... battlefield. Yeah, it's important. <laughs> uh, but also, if you if you have that time to set to sit to be with you, yeah, then when these problems arise, we're much likely to respond to it. We're maybe from more of a, a calm manner than yeah. a fear response and able to kind of see, see the bigger picture and yeah. literally that's what happens to our physiology mm. if we are in that go-go state all the time operating from fear fight flight freeze ah what's going on tomorrow when the shop's going to open yeah our, our vision literally becomes like tunnel vision we can't see possibility yeah whereas if we take care of okay what's in here so i teach my clients breathing how to release um points in their body that literally connects to the primal stress response how to mm -hmm. self-regulate because that opens up your vision yeah literally yeah. opens up your vision peripheral vision and from that space is possibility there's opportunity there's expansion so you literally change your energy, you change your state, change the way you breathe. Change mm -hmm. How you breathe is mirrors your emotional state. So if you can take a few minutes in the morning to really connect to your breathing, change your breathing, changes your emotional state. So, okay, what space am I operating from? It's a little bit like the Wi-Fi, I say, yeah. um, or, or bandwidth. Are you operating from a narrow bandwidth where possibility lives here? Or are you opening yourself up? Because there is always possibility, even in a chaos. And you probably know this, entrepreneurs and, and business owners, yeah. those who see the opportunity in the worst times, yeah. they turn it around. So actually, it's really your mindset. And it's like a, mindset. every bad time there is a new thing comes up and it happened with me over and over time like when i see like that door is shutting down on me i said there is like a 10 other doors is open and far better than that door being shut down and there there is always like a, you come with the creativity sometimes you lower in the funding and budget but you realize there is now your creativity mode is working on now and you find that there is a way better solution where you can get from the money you needed at the first place. And it comes out with you yes. like a different and best product than ever you thought you can imagine. Can you yeah. imagine, exactly. And that's beautiful what you explain because that's to do with the right brain as well. Yeah. Right brain is creativity, it's flow state. We can't be in a flow state if we're in a stress state. If mm. we're in a reactive state, that shuts down the right brain hemisphere which is creativity it's flow it's seeing opportunity yeah so that's another reason it's so important to for the for the morning ritual morning routine to have those pockets in the day where you self-regulate where you yeah. connect to your breathing or whatever it is for you meditation movement yeah also we have to have like a solution oriented approach with any kind of situation so when you master your brain, seeing that what's the worst case scenario is gonna happen and how you're gonna to react to it. So obviously you have no control over the outcome is going to be happen. So if there's shutting down or government pronounces there's a lockdown from tomorrow, it, it, you have no control over. Only what mm -hmm. you can do is like, you can see if your business can be done on online or like any other way you can approach the customers or client. A lot of people did that in, during the pandemic yeah. from like a retail store to they become a giant online stores right now, which is like, a, and they thinking is the best thing ever happened to them because otherwise they wouldn't make the kind of profit they are making right now. And also like uh, they save so much overhead, right? If you have your own uh, physical yeah. store, there is a ground rent and everything you have to look after and you have to have a physical inventory on that. On the online, you can don't have an inventory, it's totally fine. You can just buy it mm. and then uh, sell it to somewhere else. So there is yeah, always so the opportunity. True, so true. Yeah. So rather than like uh, being upset about like uh, what's the worst case going to be happen, you look at the worst case scenario, I nearly get bankrupt. That's totally fine. What's the possibility I can see? My back against the wall right now. So only way is to just keep moving forward because I can't go um, break through the wall. One big thing mm. I can do is move forward. So if I'm moving forward, then have some kind of plan have some 
the positive plans where you can do what changes you can make. And any employees are like with the, any kind of industries for your coaching business to retail store from like a restaurant, any, any kind of like a business you can find mm. a way in doing something even the chaotic moment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And the most important thing is always comes back to that time to connect to yourself yeah connecting to yourself so that is so that it actually really comes deeply within it comes from your nervous system mm-hmm. rather than than the brain the mind yeah. strategically thinking its way out yeah and what do you think about like a happy give take a break and step back so i think is the most important uh, for like entrepreneurs just taking a step back figuring out what they actually need from their life. It's not only business perspective. So sometimes the uh, burnout could be affected because of, you know, giving the time and the family and they pressuring as well. So when you come to work, that stress coming through your head. Sometimes yes. like it could be your parents or someone like, you know, giving time to your friends or even though your body, like your body is exhausted. You can't give 100% on your work. And yeah. you need to like take yeah. a break, like one or two weeks. What do you say on that? Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Like, your energy vitality your health energy and vitality is a foundation to all things so the foundation to your business to your yeah. your your relationships your health your you know your money even your financial flow everything is energy so it's um, I, I, it's really fundamental and i i found i mean i haven't traveled for a while <laughs> long to, quite a couple mm-hmm. of years now fortunately yeah. um but i found that whenever I traveled, yeah. went away, switched off, uh, miracles would come from nowhere in my business. Mm-hmm. I'd be like, oh, that's interesting. Um, and again, it is, it's, it's, it's literally just recharge, just taking that time to recharge and step yeah. away. Um, because when, when you give, when you step back, you also allow space for things to come in yeah and again if your energy and vital if you have that time to just have a break and recharge your energy and vitality then that's auto straight away giving energy and vitality to your business because you're the person behind your business yeah but also it gives you clarity as well like actually what needs to change how why do i want to do i want to be doing this project anymore is it resonating mm. with me is it aligned with me how do I feel about this so it yeah. just gives you time to kind of check in with yourself and feel and see oh is this still aligned is this is this still resonating but it's quite hard to see that sometimes if you're always in it and yeah. always doing it so I think it's fundamental yeah also like I can see uh we as the entrepreneur we take on a lot of things on our plate at the same time like as business opportunity wise so we are running a one business. We're thinking of second, third, fourth business, investing a lot of money spread out before even the our one business is successful. It's like a shiny object uh, syndrome, which is called magpie. Yeah, yeah, and <laughs> it just ends up being uh, making you burn out because there is too many projects, too many businesses you need to follow. There is two, three different teams, or you've been managing. That things like actually main thing for. A, entrepreneurs a burnout as well because this is the new era it came uh, i read one of the books is like saying the same thing so we look for like a three different opportunities three different things and none of them actually giving the 100 percent, and none of them are actually growing how it's supposed to be growing and then we burn ourselves oh this project needs to be dealt and uh, also like when it's come down to for like social media marketing because everyone's doing online marketing right now what type of business they are in they try to keep up with every kind of social media apps like i need to do facebook marketing linkedin uh, snapchat tiktok instagram uh, google ads uh, bing ads everything so keeping up with all of them posting or like sharing content or even though running a bait ads that's like exhausting and burning out yourself even yeah. though your team yeah. and and that's affecting what do you like to say that? Yes. That? Yeah, I would say delegate that stuff, yeah. the social media, especially if we're doing it across all platforms or choose the platforms up. There's so many platforms now. I mean, I think I'm only 
Instagram is the one I'm most most active on and have the most kind of yeah. activity on. So I just really use that. Like, like any any of try them, maybe try quite a few of them, and and then really just keep the ones that mm. are building up community because otherwise, it is again, it's just spreading yourself thin across so many things. But if you have someone delegate that out who can do that for you. Yeah. that saves time time is precious time and energy is your most valuable commodity um and also taking on so many different things at once you're scattering your energy so then nothing can really take off yeah to actually bring your focus into one thing do it really well and then once that's up and running then perhaps go and look into other, other opportunities. business opportunities yeah. because again if you're scattering your energy you're spreading yourself thin it doesn't it doesn't it's, and then you're just using your human power to yeah. try and drive it. Of course, it's going to burn yourself out because it can't flow because you're juggling, spinning so many plates. Yeah. And also, like, we need to give some time off for ourselves, like, in between work, right? So it's not like a working 12-hour shift. Look after your health. Give some time with your family, friends and family. And, yeah. Take it slow because it's not like a running for a sprint. It's a marathon in the business. It's like yes. you're doing for 20 years, 40 years. So why chasing? Oh, I need to make it in five years time. Why I need to make it in 10 years time? Because after you're making yeah. it, what actually going to happen? Like you're going to buy a what bigger house. What happens or, when you get to the top? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you probably buy a bigger house or probably get a Rolls Royce or Ferrari or Lamborghini. But end of the day, you're going to come to the same workplace, doing the same job. And this is it. So why are you burning out? If something about to happen is going to happen, it doesn't matter like you're working 18 hours or 20 hours, right? Working like a double the shift, how are you gonna improve like 20 times or 50 times your money gonna come? I, I don't mm. get the maths, right? You can hire someone else who can delegate the, your 18 hours work. You work nine hours and give nine hours to someone else. They get some salary mm. and also like uh, it helps you because two brain is working rather than one brain is working. Mm. And that that's where it comes to. It's just really important to under, know, get really clear. What are your priorities? What are your yeah. values? And what's your, what's your what's your definition of success? So to me, my most valuable quality is is time and energy. Yeah. So I'm going to evaluate through my day. How am I using that? Mm -hmm. do I want to be spending hours doing social media marketing no <laughs> so you know I might jump on now and like now and again and maybe I'll delegate that out and yeah because time is once you, once time goes you can't get that back and get yeah. clear what what's the, what's the kind of you know yeah what is do you, is there a like what happens when you get to the top what do you want to do with that you like what is you know the purpose or purpose of of being here our contribution to the world um so i guess there's got to be a, a clarity or behind yeah why the why why are we why are you doing this why are you working 18 hours a day what happens when you get there okay that's great provide for your family and house fantastic but yeah like you say if we then like 10 times that yeah okay so the what do you want to do with that you know so so our our why and our core values is really key mm -hmm. because it's it dry it guides us in how we show up in our day and in our life yeah and it gives meaning yeah absolutely true uh so like uh, when someone comes like you obviously you work with entrepreneurs so if someone comes and um, asking for your help they burn down and everything what's the first approach you take in order to help them well, the first thing is that they have to do a full, a do a full assessment with them, holistic lifestyle stress um, assessment, which basically looks at what's going on physiologically. So, looking at yeah. the organs and glands, and then um, starting to put to basically connect the dots with everything that's going on physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually as well, because physical symptoms often come from our emotions that we're harboring and things that are perhaps not resolved. So, yeah. so it's kind of connecting the, all of the dots and then I prioritize how 
I'm going to work with that. Normally, to be honest, it's it's about restoration. It's about self-regulation. So through body work, through mm -hmm. breath work, and then beginning with the the coaching intervention. So um, getting get, getting clarity on what is what are your priorities what are your core values most people have never done that or they don't yeah. they don't know they know it for their business but they don't know for them so they haven't got it clearly defined for themselves for their lifestyle for their relationships for their business um <coughs> their own personal values and also looking at redefining success yeah very very important because that's going to got again guide you it's going to help to give you the 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 roadmap for mm -hmm. getting to that point yeah. um and then yeah it's bringing it all together of course bringing in the the dietary um and lifestyle intervention plan as yeah. well and, and rituals rituals really how how are you going to incorporate this into your life and into your day how are you going to mm -hmm. start your morning what do you need to start your morning in order to feel like you have time and energy and restored and feel like you have vitality and healthy and be excited to run your business what do you yeah. need to do yeah excellent so like uh, are we running out of time for this podcast so those who's listening, if they want to reach out to you, work with you, or get some advice from you, how they can find you? If you have a website, social media? Yes, my website is holisticbodylife.com. That's with the W, W-H-O-L-I-S-T-I-C, bodylife.com. And my Instagram is the same. And then on LinkedIn is Francesca Blechner, mm -hmm. which I'm sure you'll probably write, write the yeah. name there because it's a bit of a long name. Um, yeah, that's the, the best way to reach out. And if they are interested in doing some deep one-to-one -one coaching, diving deep, then they can schedule in a discovery call and yeah. can talk through the process and see if it's the right fit. Yeah, that's great. Thank you so much, Francesca, for taking the time out for us for this episode Thank and share you. your valuable advice. And yeah, you're it was, welcome. It was for really great. Me. Yeah, you're most welcome. Uh, pleasure is mine uh, having you as a guest. So I wish you good luck with your career and your business as well. And hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And yeah, everything goes well what for you as Christmas well. Christmas already? <laughs> yeah. I think I you're know. the first person who says, who's wished yeah. me a happy Christmas. Oh my gosh, we're at that time already. Wow. It's, Thank it's, you. Thanks for having me. Everyone putting their Christmas lights open and everything. So every town. So uh, 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 yeah. I'd rather say, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. All right then. Thank you. Uh, Thanks a lot. Good, thank you. Thank so you. So this is a wrap, guys. Uh, thank you for listening to this episode. I wish you good luck. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. I'll talk to you soon.